A band's going down here. Delay remaining. Uh, they banned Vladimir instantly. No surprise there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do not want Dyrus to have that. However, they did ban Cannon last time. They might have to replace that ban with something else. Uh, that would leave uh, Cannon open, which is extremely strong for Dyrus in the top lane. Uh, Corky actually getting banned again from uh, ESM. I don't think he should have banned Karthus. Like, Karthus farmed a lot, and he had a lot oh. of global pressure, but, uh, I mean, Reggie can pretty much play every AP in the game, so... Uh, I don't see a point in banning the Karthus. And they banned Soraka, so maybe... Uh, I think is trying to do the same thing where they run the Urgot, but we'll see if they uh, use the ban on Urgot or not for... Uh, I think they're going to use the third ban on Urgot. I'd love TSM to actually leave Shen open to see if uh, Ordnance actually recognizes that and picks it up. You know, there's actually a lot of these teams, especially in the European scene, they just leave Shen up and they, people don't even run him. See, like he's up right now. So I don't think either team is going to even run it. But we'll see. Some teams value it more than others. Yeah, we do have the, the Janna band coming out from TSM apparently. That's a... An even scarier champion than uh, Shen. Cannon being left open, or not left open, so once again that being removed, so Dyrus can't have access to that. Uh, also, not aligning Reginald to get him in the middle if that's what TSM would choose to do. But it's going to come down to Ordnance to decide how they want to start off this game. Kogma. Uh, that's an interesting, interesting first pick. They might be trying to do a poke comp. That's a, kind of a random first pick, though. Yeah. I think you're going to see an Urgot out of uh, TSM, though. Yeah, there's Leona. Yeah, Leona's I'd actually... I'd love to see Leona top lane. <laughs> Cyrus was talking about him being used there, or her being used in the top lane, and actually to a really good success. Leona uh, but top. also just with the recent changes, she's so good at chaining her uh, stuns in the bottom lane, helping out whoever is the actual AD carry. Well, Urgot yeah. coming out. Like you were talking about. Well, Leon is actually a really good counter to Kogma, just because Kogma has no escape, so you can land... Like, mm -hmm. pretty much any time you ultimate, it's a guaranteed kill against Kogma if it hits, so... Uh, you're going to see the Urgot against that. I mean, Urgot is really good against non-sustained lanes, but Alistar is pretty good uh, sustained for that. But... Actually, I'm not going to... Yeah, okay, there he goes. They picked him. Uh, pretty much Alistar is just going to max E and then try to help Kogma free farm. But uh, the thing is, they have... Uh, Urgot plus uh, Nocturne, which is like pretty much every time the Urgot ults, then Nocturne's gonna ult with it and it's guaranteed kill bottom. Like, that's pretty much been TSM's game the whole time, is just to make plays off bottom. I think that's gonna be Udyr jungle too. So, that should be pretty good. You have a control jungler, a speedy clear jungler. And like, they nerfed Udyr this patch, but I don't think it was anything major. Slightly you used to be a champion that you were very uh, biased towards too, right? I think Uter's really good. Um, I mean, pretty much all the, the speed clear jungles are the same thing. Like, you have, what, uh, Shivana, Mundo, Udir. Like, they're all speed clear junglers, and they all have pretty much the same ganking potential. So, uh, I think Mundo probably has the best late game out of all of them. But Udir has the most control. Like, his CC is really good if you get him farmed. Like, you can just chain stun people, which is really nice. There's what is your opinion of using the um, Executioner calling against Mundo? Does it actually make enough of a difference to try to go for it more games? No. <laughs> it, it just really makes no difference. No. Actually, Dyrus, <laughs> I thought he was going to pick the Shen, and he picked the Olaf instead. It's kind of interesting. They just left the Shen up. Like, neither team is just valuing Shen. They don't really care. Huh. I think Shen still would have been a better pick. Like, some people say that Shen gets countered by Olaf, but it's really not the case. Like, Shen can always farm that lane. And then also Shen always has more global pressure than Olaf is going to have. So I don't sure why they would pick Olaf over Shen. Is this guy really going to run Shaco? I haven't seen a Shaco in, like, months. I doubt it. I don't know. If there are MIT, I could say that it could be a Shaco top lane and they could just be mixing it up. But most likely that's going to be a Shaco in the jungle. He's going to fail miserably in the beginning of the game and then be useless for the rest of the game if they actually lock that in. I've That's actually my prediction. seen some pretty good Shakos. Uh, I mean, they just, just come from Korea. <laughs> but, no, he's, he's, he's going to wuss out. He's going to pull the trundle. So, I guess they're going with like this kind of like protect the Kog'Maw comp and like zone people out. Like, you have the trundle pillar and you have the Nivea wall. 
And you can kind of kite people around and protect Kogma while he tries to kill everybody. But... Uh, I'm interested to see if they can make it out of the laning phase. Because last game, the team count didn't really come into practice because they just got dominated so hard in the laning phase. So we'll see how this goes. But I think uh, that Ordnance has a really good team comp, actually. Like, team comp's not bad. If they can make it out of laning phase and to get into team fights, I think they could win. But we'll oh, see. Robert actually doing a good job last game, so if you can continue that and uh, the rest of the team can catch up to him. Yeah, Robert actually did a good job. He, I think he matched CS the whole game, right? Yeah. Well, until he started getting quadruple ganked. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'll kind of do it. Uh, getting Karthus ulti and Nocturne ulti, that kind of kind of ruins the lane. But uh, yeah, they're going to pick Ryze. You know, the funny thing is, is uh, Nivea is actually the counter to Ryze, or one of the counters to Ryze, and then Reginald just picks Ryze straight up into it. Like, he just doesn't care. So that's kind of interesting. Um, if the Nivea is good and they can control their blue, then Nivea should start smashing Ryze post 6. But we'll see if they can control their blue or not. So that's kind of interesting that Reggie would just, he just straight up just picks into a counter pick. Like, I don't know if that's out of, like, no respect for the enemy player or, like, or if he doesn't know that Anivia is a counter. I don't know. I'll ask him about it later. Hopefully we can get an interview after the game. An interview. Like, yo, bro, Bay Life, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like Reggie. He's a good guy. I don't know. Like, everybody thinks it's all these, like, feuds and stuff like this and rivalries between teams and everything. And at the end of the day, like, you go to events and everything's chill. And then nobody cares. So. Okay. Alright, we're going to cut to a commercial real quick. It's got three minutes. I'm going to look over the runes and stuff like that for people who don't see the ads. Like, I'm interested in seeing what people are running on Urgot and Bottom Lane. It should be all AD. Yeah, he's running CDR Blues and then, what was that, 4.5 AD, so that's off. Yeah, he's running mixed armor pen. He's an 18 armor pen and then 4.5 AD. So that's kind of a weird mix. Uh, it's just kind of like random numbers, I guess. Like you could, there's no real difference between if you run the three flat AD quints or not. But the CDR quints are really nice. I mean, blue is not quints. And I don't think Dyer's going to run movement speed again. Let's see if he does. Uh, yeah, we're going to run the same runes as last time. I just don't know why they don't value movement speed at all. It's kind of interesting. And that's actually Olaf versus Udyr. What's up? I just want to point out, uh, to point out that Kax has named all of his rune pages after fruits, uh, except for one, uh, which he named X Special. And that's the best fruit of them all. Cherries, <laughs> Girl Star, Coconuts, Graves, the Cheese. I don't even know where there's many fruits to begin with. What the heck? Strawberries, raspberries, apples, bananas, mangoes. <laughs> Done his research. Oh, man. So, yeah, this uh, Trundle's actually running a random rune page. He's running attack speed, 14% attack speed. It's kind of really unusual for people to run on Trundle. I think flat AD is better because of his Q. And only 12 armor pen. Huh. And then Udir, let's see what he's running. Udir should lose this lane versus Olaf. I think he's going to get run over. Uh, he's running 15 AD. So he's actually going to be Tiger Udir top. Um, the only way, to be honest, the only way Udyr can win this lane is if he starts Doran Blade and he all ends him at level 2. I'm, I'm calling that right now. It's the only way he'll win this lane. I don't think he's going to do it, but we'll see. I mean, it's Tiger Udyr versus Olaf. I think he's just going to get crushed unless some kind of gank can happen. But good luck good luck to him. Good luck. Because Olaf is a what, really good counter versus Udyr. So that's because, like, Olaf's trade is so much higher. Like, it's, what, 360 true damage at level 9 uh, from the E, and you can't shield in time to, like, negate that damage. Like, you'd have to predict it. So, just the trade's too high. And what do we got? 30 seconds till the game starts. Oh, man. Hopefully this is, like, not as one-sided of a game, though. Yeah, I hope not. Or we can separate the game into a 2v2 bottom and see who can actually pull it out there. You know, let the rest of the team just kind of play around for it. Yeah, I didn't even make it out of laning phase. Like, it's kind of, like, bad. Like, a lot of times in competitive play, you don't really get to see a lot of, like, good team fights anymore just because 
the game gets decided so fast in the laning phase, and then by the time that a team fight does break out, it's uh, it's just one team like running another team over just because like they're just so far ahead in gold advantage. Like I didn't, there wasn't a single team fight in that whole game. Like there's maybe like a skirmish between three people, and you know it just it's just nothing. But game's loading up, and I think you're going to probably see a level 1 fight out of Ordnance. I really hope they do. Like, both teams actually have very strong level 1s, so I think you're going to see a level 1 fight, and I'm kind of excited for that. I think that Ordnance, it's actually going to be whoever gets the jump will have that. Alright guys, so we're getting into game number 2 here of TSM versus Ordnance Gaming. This is for the Reign of Gaming Invitational Tournament, uh, North American Edition, round of 16. Uh, game number two, TSM winning game number one in pretty much TSM fashion. Uh, we'll see if Ordnance can come back and actually make something happen in this game. I hope to see a level one fight like you're talking about. Something's going down on the tri-bush for uh, Ordnance, but no one is actually in the area to do anything about that. Yeah, TSM's actually playing really defensively, and it's kind of surprising. Um... I mean, they both teams have a really strong level one. Uh, I think they're gonna try and take the race, though. They're going over to Warded, I think. TSM is so probably gonna see Tarek warding the raves. Yeah, he has four green wards on him, so yep, you can see him warding the raves. Um, we have all yeah, ordnance hitting that bush, though. We do have CV coming out from ordnance gaming, so they're gonna be getting a little bit more vision. Hopefully, be able to defend against Nocturne a little bit more by uh, predicting where he could be and actually dropping that five one down to give them the vision. They were able to spot Dyrus so they know exactly where he is, and seeing that he's in the uh, TSM's tri-bush is going to give them an idea that TSM's not doing any sort of super strong level 1 invasion. Oh, uh, give them a little bit more confidence to move around. Ordnance is still moving together, though. It's 1 minutes and 30 seconds in the game. Their bottom lane has not moved yet. So that's actually kind of interesting. Yeah, Kogma and Alistar still have not headed bottom yet. And yeah, Rai's actually taking the big wraith right now. I guess Reggie, this is like his new thing. I actually haven't seen any APs do that, uh, level 1 take the, the big wraith. I mean, he really didn't lose much off that, because you get the health and the ma uh, mana back from taking the big wraith. And then actually he puts the jungler pretty behind. It's kind of interesting that he does that. Because he got that vision off of the um, the, the green ward that the Tarek put down. Yeah, we do actually have a really strong leash coming up from Kayak and a special on the blue buff, so Reginald didn't need to uh, head over there. Uh, so it's going to help him out. He's already level 2 against Anivia's level 1, so getting a slight advantage is actually able to zone Anivia out a little bit. Uh, not anything too substantial, but every little bit helps. Yeah, early game Anivia is actually a little bit weaker than Ryze, but once Anivia gets blue and gets level 6, he'll actually start rolling that lane. And uh, I think Owen's actually going to go for a quick gank on uh, top lane. You, you got boots and pots at the start, which usually means that you want to gank early. So uh, I'd actually be looking for a gank coming out top pretty soon. Um, he's moving down to race. He's not really... Okay, never mind. I guess he's not going to gank unless it's going to be off middle. Yeah, Trundle actually sitting in the middle. Uh, I think he wants to get a pillar off on Rise, but Rise is really far back because they have that ward. And I think yep. they saw him go through. Yeah, the ping went down on Trundle, so no gank's going to be coming out from there anytime soon. Uh, two wards by the Ordnance Gaming uh, Raids, so one of those was able to help against that uh, gank. The other one going to give Ordnance a little bit of uh, vision to know if Rise heads to their own Raids once again. Uh, young Fu, Fu Shang in the top lane is having a little bit of trouble with uh, Tyrus' level 3 against uh, Young Fu's level 2. But as soon as he clears this wave, that will even out. Quite a bit. Trundle is wasting a lot of time. He's going to put down the pillar in the middle. Uh, he's going to have to flash. Oh, Spellsy getting a nice head by Pulverize on KX. A lot of damage going down. Uh, Robert actually trying to come in as well. However, X Special does a nice job of stunning Robert. Uh, so not able to pick up the kill on KX. But still a nice trade uh, in favor of uh, the Ordnance Gaming bottom lane. So once again, they're starting this game off pretty well. Uh, if the rest of the lanes, the full Ordnance, can do uh, a little bit better than the last game, and we might see some of those really good team fights like you were talking about before this game started. Yeah, you have Nocturne waiting actually in the middle. Ryze has no flash because he just burns it on that Trundle gank. Uh, I don't think Ryze... Odd one coming in here on a Sneaky himself. A nice Rune Prism coming down. That's going to egg Sneaky Castro right in the beginning. 
He's going to go down as well. However, Reginald's going to get really low and get taken down by a lull. What are you doing? Uh, who's going to be all, almost able to kill Odd One, but the unspeakable horror goes off uh, and forces him away. So Odd One's going to survive with both buffs uh, for his team and just under 50 health. So uh, one for one gank going slightly in favor of TSM, but still a nice job by Ordnance uh, to make it so that it wasn't actually too bad. It was actually really good uh, that uh, Odd One traded the tower aggro so that uh, Ryze could come in and do some damage um, instead of just sitting there and tanking it, and that's why they managed to pick up that kill to begin with. But it's really good that Trundle actually managed to come in and pick up the kill off of that. Like, it's a one-for-one -one trade. It's first blood. It's a 100 gold difference. Uh, it's really not that bad, but uh, now Nivea doesn't have egg, so that could... He has to kind of play more cautiously now, because if Ryze manages to hit a W and Nocturne follows up, then that's going to be just brutal and he's going to die. Nivea has like one of the lowest health pulls in the game. But one thing you actually need to look at is like the CS right now. Uh, that's where like that 700-ish gold's coming in in the difference. Like, Robert actually is doing really good. What do we else we got? We got 16 CS to 29. That's really bad. The Nivea is actually almost getting <laughs> CS doubled again. So I mean I think this this uh, game might get decided in the CSing alone, um, rather than the team play. You actually have Trundle coming around behind yeah. Rise again. Rise remember has no flash here. Good pillar. <laughs> and Reggie's just not even gonna care. He's just gonna sit there and trade with them <laughs> and take the kill with them. <laughs> so he just goes. That's gonna allow Trundle to get pretty strong moving through the game. So he will be able to help out bottom lane a little bit. If Robert actually can actually stay, even that might make it so that uh, they can do really well in some three v two ganks later on. A uh, little stun going down on Robert actually, but nothing too serious. Triumph and Roar is able to keep him up to full health. Yeah, I'd rather have once a, again. A farm Paul, what are you doing? Fighting with Odd One in the middle. I uh, can actually force him out here. Level six to level five, so Agony is going to be able to make a difference, uh, forcing Odd One to run away from that. Yeah, you have Trundle almost doubling the Anivia CS now, so I'd rather have a farm to Anivia than a farm Trundle at the end of the game, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, Udyr is starting to get pushed in a little bit, too. You have 51 CS to 23 CS on Udyr. Uh, uh, Dyrus is controlling this lane. You have a fight break in the middle. It's a good wall managed to save Anivia. Wall with the pillar. Uh, I think this guy might get baited. Yes, and maybe he's gonna get baited right into the nocturne pickup. There's just these skirmishes going out over and over again, middle. Um, and Nivy is just getting pummeled. He's all, already 0 and 3 at seven minutes in the game, and I don't think there's any way he's gonna come back from that. Uh, Trundle's yeah, actually spent like more time in out a little bit against Nivia. Uh, he was a little bit defensive there. He backed off before he did the last little bit of damage to be able to kill. Reginald, uh, and then got painted in for a death, so that was really important. It's also going to allow Reginald to steal the ordinance blue buff while Dyrus uh, kept uh, Young Fu uh, busy for a little while. Yeah, it's like I said, if the Navy doesn't get the blue, then Ryze is just going to run that lane over. Um, the Navy is a counterpick to that lane, but uh, I think DSM just played it really well at the start and put a lot of pressure. So, I mean, you have level 7 blue buff Rise versus level 5 Anivia with no blue buff, so I don't think you're going to see that lane coming back. And I think Chaos is actually about to hit level 6 on bottom, so you're going to start seeing some plays down there. Yeah, he just hit level 6. So I think he's just, once that wave pushes out, he's going to go back and buy, and then he's going to come back and set up for a gank uh, with the, the swap into a Taric stun. We do have uh, Nocturne actually grabbing a Vision Ward. Got a lot of extra money from those kills early on, so he's going to be able to drop those down, uh, counter the Vision of uh, Ordnance in a little bit. Ooh, a lot of damage coming out of Rise already. Uh, Nivea is almost going to die just from two pokes there, but Trundle once again is going to have to babysit uh, Sneak to Castro in the mid lane. Jungle's two levels higher than his own middle lane. That's kind of ridiculous to see, uh, especially at nine minutes into the game. Yeah, um, actually Nocturne's coming down on bottom, there's a swap, and Nocturne's going to fall up on that. And Kogma has no escape, so he really can't do much to get out of this. And Trundle's coming in behind him, actually. Uh, he's going to get instantly exhausted, though. Uh, I think, yeah, that's going to only be the Kogma kill off of that. They're going to take pretty big damage from Kaox poking them up, though. And Spellsy goes really low and just gets dropped as well. 
Uh, every time that Urgot ultimates out with a Nocturne ultimate, it's just going to be a free kill. And they're going to take Dragon off of that because don't forget Alwyn has that pink ward and his Wriggles. So they have no vision to follow this up off of. Uh, I really don't see, like, Robert X Lee is playing the lane, like, to be honest, as an AD player, there's no way that you could play that lane. Like, they were almost, uh, they were inside their own tower. Like, they're playing back really far. Uh, it's just Urgot plus Taric plus Nocturne, just too much follow up CC. And there's just honestly nothing you can do as Kogma. Like, you just get, you got nothing. You have, you have Flash, and that's it. You have no other escape outside that. And you're just going to get killed every time. So, yeah, lol, what are you doing? You came in and did uh, quite a bit of damage at the end of that fight, but because he came in when uh, Robert X was already dead, and we see Anivia getting egged once He's again. He's going to tower again. Very easily. So much damage. Just one Q oh, took man. half of Anivia's health, because all he has is tears. That's 33 CS to 61. Uh, I just feel so bad for this Anivia right now. He's 0-4 at 10 <laughs> minutes. There's so many deaths coming out. Maybe not the best champion for him to choose right now. Professional not minding uh, taking that rise against the Anivia because he's getting so much help uh, and just doing such a good job in the 1v1 anyway that it doesn't really matter. Yeah, uh, I just don't even know what to say about that. I mean, it is like the Anivia is a counter pick, and just I don't think that the Anivia is playing the lane very well. But, uh, hey, Trundle's farming pretty good, so we'll see how that goes. Trundle actually has almost the same items as uh, the Nocturne. He's not too far off considering the kills and the dragon. And he's watching the Olaf farm against that Uder. He still doubled his CS. Uh, Olaf doesn't even back to buy in a while, so he's sitting on 1,500 gold. So once he comes back to buy... Uh, actually, Uter is all inning Olaf up top. Uh, Olaf's going to ghost, and you're going to get a Trundle Pillar right there. Really close. He's actually going to kill him. is not going to be winning in that fight. we got to fight Adam. does go down. He's going to be able to go back and buy. Robert actually getting jumped on. Uh, I keep him surprised coming out here as well. Going to do a little bit of damage, but not enough to actually pick up a kill. And Spelzy goes down as well. So that's a three for, or two for one there if you count both lanes. Uh, again, in favor of TSM. However... Young Fu and Lol, what are you doing? Are you going to be able to take out this turret in the top lane? That's going to help even up some of the gold a little bit, but uh, the bottom, the bottom tower lane is going to go down for sure on that too. Uh, Urgot, Noct—I mean, Urgot, Nocturne, and Terek is just so good together because uh, I mean, Nocturne actually there's a huge fight going on top. What the heck, Rise is trying to battle one v two, and I think he's going to come out on top on this. Well, it's going to really be close. close. Lol, what are you doing? He's going to need to get one more hit, but he does no not have mana. the flash to be able to get in there to actually finish it off. Yeah, he actually uh, ran out of mana. Very unfortunate for him. Good thought by Reginald to actually come in there and see the situation. It's not even a situation. Reginald's just going man mode this game. Like, he's just going, he's like, oh, 1v2, I don't <laughs> care. And it's 12 minutes, 30 seconds. The blue's coming up. You have Trundle sitting right there. Just managed to get out on the port. And now you have Anivia with another blueless lane uh, against blue buff Rise, who has tears. Yeah, actually, he's going to be waiting here. It's going to be the ambush. Here. Power going down. Oh my he's god. Just help uh, instantly. Drop the ball for whatever reason. That was just brutal to watch. He almost two shot him. Alright, well, middle lane's not doing too well for Ordnance. Uh, bottom lane, still trying to hold on. A little bit of pokes coming out, but especially able to uh, freeze Robert Eckley and then KX is able to pull off his combo uh, when that actually happens. So, good training. From uh, KX at this point, now that they won that recent team fight, Spelzy's extremely low. He's going to need to back off a little bit. Yeah, if he gets hit by dropping. one acid, uh, acid bomb, he's just ultimates. It's just too much damage at this point. He has Brutalizer, and what, what, how much armor does Spelzy have? He has 55, so he's almost doing close to true damage with him, especially if you get a Shatter off from Tarek. It's just too much damage. Uh, and you actually have Cyrus was actually able to buy, so now coming back to the lane, he's not going to be dying anytime soon. Uh, able to grab that giant spell and uh, the ruby crystal. Most likely grabbing a uh, one monk armor soon too, right? Yeah, actually, have Ryze come behind Uder up top. Uh, I don't see any way Uder's gonna make it out. He's gonna get straight up tower though. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna get run over in his own tower. <laughs> Reginald only lost like 100 health on that. And there's actually a fight going out bottom. Uh, Trundle's gonna manage to get a good pillar off on him. Kogma's only gonna Nocturne following up on him. And Kogma's just. Swaps right in the tower and just gonna die. Uh, 
Trundle tried to make a good gank on there to salvage bottom lane, but there's just no way that's going to happen. Uh, Aragot is just too far ahead at this point. Um, they're pretty close in CS. It's just... Uh, Aragot... Ergot into anything that can fall up on a gank is just too brutal, and Navy's gonna get tired of it. Have Olaf that's coming in behind him too, so they're gonna trade tower aggro and just gonna get ran over in their own mid tower. That's just pretty much towers mean nothing at this point in the game. They're just coming from behind, coming from all angles, and killing them. It's three to thirteen. But the Iris might actually get caught. No, he could bump. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There was a chance. Close for no cigar. The directed camera almost actually pulls away a little bit of the excitement because if it doesn't go to someone that looks like they might get attacked, you know they're not going to actually die. It's a lazy man mode. <laughs> it's pretty good so far, though. I haven't really needed to do anything, and it just shows me everything that's exciting. Nice job by Riot there. So, I don't think we're going to even see a team nope. fight this game. It's just like, ugh. <laughs> Fifteen and a half minutes into the game. GSM's only up by six and a half K gold. A little bit less than last game. So, nice job by Ordnance Gaming to recover a little bit. Uh, maybe ten to fifteen more games against GSM and then might, uh, might be a little bit more even. Robert actually thinking about going in there against their... Yeah, just the solo lanes uh, really just aren't carrying their weight in this game. I think Robert actually did a good job. Like the bottom lane, Spelzy and Robert did a good job. Uh, but I mean, look, you have Ryze here where it's roaming up top. Uh, I think Trundle's actually going to try and counter game that they spot him with a ward, so this could actually turn out in their favor. A tower is going to go down. You have Trundle coming up here right now. But I don't know if they're going to be even strong enough to kill that Ryze. That Ryze is so strong. Almost instantly kills their A little gear. bit of focus going down on Reginald. He is going to take a lot of hurt. Ignite going down as well. Uh, but he is going to be able to get away slightly. If Sneaky Catcher doesn't use the Flash Frost, but he is able to pick him off. Uh, passing to use a Flash to stay away from Dyrus. Uh, on just, just barely missing. But Dyrus able to turn around, do Reckless Swing. Almost get the kill on Lowell. What are you doing? But not quite. Narcos so, yeah, actually the kind of guy right going now. You might in favor you can get Vision on Trundle Top. He can actually kill him right now. Uh, he has his ultimate up as well. It's going to be really close. Nice dodging with that pillar. I don't think it's going to matter at the end of the day. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> it's too far ahead at this point. It's so cute. And bottom tower is going to go down. They have a huge creep wave, and Alistar actually got picked off by Ergot and Tarek while the whole skirmish is going on up top. So they're going to lose this bottom tower, and I think they're just going to keep pressuring in. They're probably going to take the second bottom tower if Cogma can't get there in time. Uh, actually, no, they're going to back out on that. 